clear. We're gonna start the game. We're gonna make a game from scratch, from nothing. I hope you're ready. So I was inspired by a friend of a friend of mine. Uh, they're starting RPG Maker and I was just all like, well, there's not very many examples of people starting RPG Maker MV from scratch, is there? And you know what? I'm sure there is, but none of them have been from me, so now they will be from me. I will show you exactly how I start um, a game from scratch. And uh, what we'll do is we'll use the RTP. I won't, I'll, I'll try not to use any of the DLC or like any outside sources for now, just because like most people don't have access to all that. So we'll just go ahead and do that. I'll show uh, a few examples of what can happen, but you know, I'll try to have some sort of structure, but you know, with this being live and not, you know, we'll be probably hit off of track every so often, which is fine. Hello, Stag, welcome in. Oh, hi, Max, you are awake. Kamit, is it Kamit's fault? <laughs> the KK. <laughs> KK slider. Probably audible. I am audible. Dance, dance, dance. Na, 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 to make time. Where the says. All right. So first thing you do, I won't really show. You just uh, have to open the the thing. It'll ask you to make a new. Oh no, wrong program. It'll ask you to name your folder, name your game, and then uh, what location to save it on. I'm just gonna go ahead and do it on the desktop because they're not very big files. It's usually when you add like custom songs, custom graphics, that it becomes sort of a problem. Well, not a problem, but like, like, like just bigger and stuff. But we'll call this, uh, what should we call this? Hmm. Um, we'll call this. But what's it? There's that word. Like new or something. Uh. We'll just call it. E E A U. Okay, now that I've got that all settled, let's put on the display on. Um, let's see my everything tonight. Oh, wow, it's like Inception. Okay. Alright, so once you do that, you choose your, uh, Location of where to save it, you'll see this. You'll have like a whole grassy thing, you'll have your starting position for your person. Alright, so before you head into all of that, there is a whole bunch of uh, things you might want to set up. Uh, well, number one is uh, probably your characters. That's what I usually set up the first thing. So you'll want to hit the hit database or F9. And you'll see here, you're given four base characters over here. Harold, Therese, Marsha, Lucius. Uh, that's, those are the starter characters for RPG MV. And, but if you double click the base av avatar right there, you see that there's uh, plenty of actors to choose from. 
you're given a lot in the base package over here. You have a lot of heroes, you have your villains that you can choose from. You have monsters, you even have like village people. You have the nature characters and all that. There is a, uh, actually, <laughs> I believe there's a lot more NPCs than there are heroes, but you know, that makes sense. So, should you want to choose this, I'll show you how to do uh, generate as well as uh, use these actors. Say you don't want Harold. Uh, wait, actually, let's say we want to keep Harold. We could keep Harold as the main character, just to show you. But say you want uh, the secondary character to be different. You could just change the actor here. And uh, keep in mind, it's okay if you use like base characters over here. It's uh, especially when you're learning, you don't want to like uh, go into too much depth with all of that. So let's say we want uh, we want this character. Age, dude. To match it up, you uh, they were found in Actor Two, so you just match all of them in the Actor Two in the side viewer too. You just keep scrolling until you see them. Should you want the side view character? And it's just like that. And we can name them something else. We'll name them. Uh... And you can do the same for your other characters. I'll show you um generated character. Their art style is slightly different, but you know. In case you want completely uh original characters, uh or as much as you can in an RTP, uh you head up to this bar, you hit character generator. And from there, you'll see you can choose from these tabs. Uh, the the kid ones I did buy the the kid parts for the uh, because they usually don't have much in terms of that in the base package for some reason, which is which sucks because what if you want to do like a flashback to your uh, main character when they were younger? But anyways, uh, there's a lot of options like you could randomize them just like that. <laughs> Oh man, that's funny. Uh, okay. Yeah, just like that. Randomize them. But, uh, let's start from scratch. Character. We'll make, uh, one of each type. Why not? Okay. Ooh, what kind of character? This kind of character. Um, and you could change the skin colors all the way from right here. You can choose the front hair. Uh, it's pretty limited, I'm not going to lie. But we'll work with what we got over here. And, uh, there's, uh, various hairstyles you could choose from here. You could change the hair color from this side. Let's start with, let's start with black hair. A little easier for me to look at. You have the the, the emo cover one eye hair. <laughs> I don't need friends. I work alone. I'm definitely not gonna befriend anyone in this party too, especially. <laughs> Guess it looks like a Matthew Patel right now. I'll try to change his hair. Alright, we love dudes with long hair, so we'll go with that. Do you want a beard? Uh, the beard look kind of funky too in this generator, and I gotta lie. But a little, a little stubble is fine. <laughs> and I don't shave either. I'll make you an elf. <laughs> um, what kind of eyes? What kind of eyes does a emo person have? Are you fiery? Are you like yellow dyed? Are you purple? I think you're definitely purple. No, are you gonna be the darker? Yeah, very mysterious. Yeah, look at your eyeballs. Hmm. <laughs> Doesn't like my eyebrows. Okay, we'll we'll keep uh, that one. 
And uh, protective in the group, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, another thing I usually do is I figure out my character is like through... Because I, I can't draw or nothing, but uh, if I could, I use... I mean, if I, since I can't, I usually like uh, generate with either this or pick crews. I should honestly start using pick crews for the, <laughs> the things, because uh, I, I almost never really... Actually, I never did, so my uh, games, I just always made them free, so I'm just like, whatever. As long as they're okay with me crediting them. Um, no, how dare he even have a thought of a smile? I could, I would never smile. You'll never see me do this unless you put me through a Snapchat filter. So, I'm gonna be angry. Okay, and does he have a facial mark? Of course he does! It's not your first character if he doesn't have a facial scar. <laughs> when I was, when I was just a little boy, I got slashed by a guy in a mask, and he. Uh, ever since then, I've wanted revenge. See, we're already coming up with. You could have beast ears, but I'm gonna. <laughs> I kind of don't want to give him two sets of ears, so. <laughs> Keep him as an elf, right? <laughs> do I want to give him a tail? Uh, we'll do that for another character. Do I want to give him wings? <laughs> I'm a fall. I'm a fallen angel. Don't call me an angel. I'm closer to that of a demon than an angel. So for your first character, do you want wings? Of course you do. You want black black wings. And you have a, a whole bunch of costume sets here. I kind of wish you could change the top and the bottom, but you know, stuff regenerator. What can you do, right? So, uh, let's see. I bet he'd be like a. Yeah, we could probably keep the whole big ass knight costume. So we'll just change your color to something a little more somber, yeah? Yeah, that's that's a nice color. Where's the blue coming from? Oh. Yeah, there's like random blue on here when that goes so much of that. Oh well, well I don't want it to mismatch, so I just I guess I'm giving him blue. <laughs> Let's add better. Alrighty, you could also give a cloak here. He already sort of has one, so I'm not going to add that on top of that. And give accessories. You don't have to add these, but you know. I also lost my eye, and that's why I I hide it with my hair and my <laughs> I patch. No, probably not that. Um, Edge McLord! <laughs> Edgy, I kinda wanna na name him that. Okay, we'll, g we'll give you- we'll give you earrings. We'll give you piercings over there. Let's see how blue looks. Uh, do we want blue? Do we want black? We'll give you black because blue's the only color because my soul is blue and my heart is black. <laughs> glasses? I wear sunglasses because when explosions happen, I make it look like I don't see it, even though I am looking. To make sure none of my friends are hurt. Okay, so you save those. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure there's a proper way to do this, like, uh, moving the the face, waiting till you have, like, eight of them or something, but I usually don't do that, so don't follow this example, I'm just too lazy to, like, save them all and then put, import them all into the same thing. Ideally, that's what you should do, so I'm telling you what you should do, so don't follow what I'm doing. <laughs> it's just, like, <laughs> putting them all in one. 
you know. So, his name is gonna be Edgy Lord. <laughs> Thank you for that, Zach. Block character. It's Hurt. I usually name it Hurt. And of course, the side battler. And in case you want to save them, uh, you'll hit the save settings. You'll put them in. Uh, uh, what I usually do is I make a new folder here. Uh, yeah. In case you want to edit them for any reason, you want them to, uh, you know, have a the same character, but you don't remake them separate sprites. So, for example, say he goes through a character arc. He's smiling. <laughs> he smiles. The edge man smiles. Anyways, close that out. We'll go right here. So we have the two um, made-up characters, Harold and Torin. Uh, so we'll have Edge and Glor right here. So you do the same thing. You just search for the name. There you go. There's your first character in your first game. Uh, hold on. Let me round this out. Actually, uh, we'll have. There we go. All right. So we have two two knight characters. I guess we could have another mage character over here. I said I was going to make one of each type. Alrighty. Well, we don't have to make the mage right now. We can just... Uh, another... Alright. Now, who do we want? We want an outgoing person, a cool, happy person. You know, it's not anything's possible, you know, you can make any kind of character you want. This uh, generator, oh, I won't use those hairs because they're part of the DLC. Yeah, but uh, yeah, you could uh, make any kind of character. You can have them pink hair, you can have them blue hair. We'll make them have the redder hair. But our last character was blue, so this one will not be. You could uh, change the hair tie color. Make that a nice little red as well. Hmm. hmm. Actually, actually, we gotta change that rear hair so it changes that. It covers eye ears. Oh, is it not the rear hair that color covers the ears? Yeah, let me go back to that. Other. That our front? Okay, <laughs> find the front that covers our ears. There we go. Now we have a beast ears. Uh, eventually when we're up there. Okay, our eyeballs. Capybara! Hello! Sorry, why why didn't I hear that? That's weird. Oh, it was still muted. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to... Didn't mean to... Uh, not hear that. Oh, um, oh my shit. Hello, welcome in. I'm glad you like the capybara. Uh, we're, we're changing the... Uh, Making our characters here. Uh, uh, those are the, the anime ones, so we'll not do those. Gotta, maybe her eyeballs will be red. Now she's outgoing. She's gonna have high, happy eyebrows or confident eyebrows. Yeah, we could like the confident eyebrows. You gotta be smiling. The, the outgoing opposite of the other person. The Mr. Edge Lord. <laughs> there. Now this person will definitely have biggest ears. What kind? Oh, thank you.
She could keep that kind of. <laughs> okay, since we gave her a tail and stuff, we'll uh, hold back on the wings. Okay, we can make this like a battle mage type of character. Maybe she has too much red. We'll just make red an accent or something and give her like whiter clothing. Like, fuck it, I'll use this color. Oh. Hmm, why doesn't that really match? It's so weird. Damn, is that confused? You know what? It's fine. <laughs> All right, she could also have cloak. I know some people say no capes, but also why not? Hmm, actually, I don't think I really fetch. <laughs> capes are awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. They are awesome. <laughs> All right, and you have accessories you can have over here. Oh, that'd be fun. And mask. Ooh. But how are we supposed to see her smile if she has it? Make the non edgy one be the one missing the eye. Missing an eye, but never there to you. Yeah, okay, that you've convinced me. I've been convinced. All right. Well, she's happy. Uh, what should her name be? I name her Happy, but I don't want to infringe on uh, Orel Williams or Undertale. Not Undertale. Fuck, what's that thing called? Fairy Tale. <laughs> Rainbow? Okay, that's good. <laughs> I like that. Rainbow. Oh, shit. Well, good thing I already saved it. Hmm. 
No, I'm sad. I uh, fucking missed that person probably when they <laughs> commented and I was too late to say hi. Oh, oh. No, no loads. Alright, and same kind of deal here, you just import them. I like how I just went from, this is how to make a game, and then I'm just like making <laughs> characters all over here. So yeah, like a little contrast over here, you have the two. <laughs> DMs? Okay, I will check my DMs. You know, this person... Harold, I'm sorry, you could... you could... wait... Can I...? Oh, I can't move them. Okay, you're the main character for now. Oh. <sighs> Even though the other is totally like my main character, then Harold does. Okay, so it is, yeah, it's uh, by far one of the biggest reasons I started RPG Maker. It's just like, you can just make silly little, little, uh, stories for your dudes. Um, okay, let's make a care kid character. Uh, hopefully one that's not annoying and, uh, impedes the plot with stuff. Okay, we'll make him green. And you have both, uh, feminine and masculine hairstyles over here. Uh, this part, it's, it's not in the, the regular package here, so... This is just a little bonus. Ooh, I like that. I wish I had that hair, too. Oh, they look like a little flower. Cute. You know, the kid the kid characters are always nice and cheerful. They're always uh uh happy to see you and stuff, but what if they're a little you know, they're a little fucked up? They got like yellow eyes like this. Something might be fucked up about them. You never know. Because I like my eyebrows, I'm gonna give them my eyebrows. But, you know, like uh, they say, you put a little bit of yourself in your characters. My eyebrows are the character. I mean, what I put in the character. <laughs> Look at these bones I found. <laughs> I found them, and they're not from my closet. Oh, is that like a three-face? Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> I am sad. Perpetually. Oh, I should say, if you want expressions, you could, uh, just have separate, uh, characters for them. Like, uh, you could import the, for the base images, but I'm too, too lazy for that. Unless it's, like, custom assets that I use. Perpetually hungry. Perpetually silly. Perpetually kissy. Let's just make them, like, real happy or like smug happy sure. they could also have a scar they could have a band-aid on the side let's have a band-aid on the nose you know like if you uh if you got a kid character they're they're bound to get hurt like in ways they shouldn't you know they don't really like obey the they don't uh listen to their parents advice and stuff you know, it's okay. Normal kid things. And you'll even have it matching. The band-aid will be matching with your hair. <laughs> oh, there's no tailor wings. Uh-oh. Well. Hey, they got their own fits in here. He could be the mage type character over here.
could be the little green mage. Oh, that's kind of cute. <laughs> Accessories. blocks out the other thing unfortunately though <laughs> the glasses i don't think we have a character with glasses yet sure let's do it let's fuck it up hmm should we make this like yellow oh yeah that kind of fits then we'll make the the main color like yeah there we go well, you could hardly see it now that, now that I think about it. There we go. Yeah, that fits. Looks a little bit like an egg, but you know how it is. Alright. Hmm, what should we name you? Uh... We'll name you, uh, 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 man, I, another thing is, I'm really bad at names, so. Do the same process over there. Do all your settings. All right, and put them right here. Then. Now you'll notice on the the little sides here they have the class hero, warrior, mage, and priest are the They're the, uh, the regular sets in terms of this. There's a lot of customization you could do in here. You could put in their own skills that you want them to learn. You could even change uh, their, uh, uh, their skills and their um, stats. It really depends on uh, what kind of game you're thinking of making with RPG Maker. I imagine most people want to make RPGs, you know, hence the name Maker. So, uh, a lot of people like to adjust uh, the curves on that. So we'll just go ahead and you could, uh, from level like three, one in all of them, you could adjust all of them. The quick setting would also just do it like. It generates it. How strong they could be. They're like standard settings right there. But if you really want in-depth things, you could 
tech uh, from right here, all kinds of things from your elements, see the, the rates that uh, what each attack does to them and what they could do to others with their attacks and their elements. Oh, hi! Thank you so much for the for the follow, Maple Maggie. How are you doing today? Welcome to the inn. And uh, so you can make their own elements. So if you want the warrior to be physical, it usually makes sense. Or if you want a certain mage to be fire, etc. And I don't believe it has to be just one. Yeah, it could be it could be many. So you could be physical as well as fire and stuff like that. And you can add what kind of skill types they have. So, for example, a bash attack would be make sense for a physical warrior. A mage uh, <laughs> would have like fire attacks and stuff. So they have magic. Yeah, I'm happy to <laughs> that you're here. To do you usually a uh, stream RPG maker as well. Yeah. Um. So a friend of a friend of mine was uh. They just got RPG Maker MV, and I figured I could make something to sort of help them uh, get their bearings going and stuff. Uh, I'm doing a all-around general look for now. Um, yeah, I started with uh, making characters, and now I'm looking into the more in-depth uh, stuff like this. Uh, I'm gonna be real with y'all. I'm pretty new to MV. I've been using VX for most of my most of my time, so I'm not too familiar with uh, the what's it called the in-depth things here. Like you could equip canes and swords and stuff like that. Oh, action times! Whoa, special flags! Yeah, I'm learning too. See, <laughs> and you could even have a a lot of effects uh, when they get their ass whooped, so you can make them die like a boss. <laughs> oh, that was cool, cool, cool. I guess those are mostly for monsters, that you can have them for your own classes for some reason. But anyways, there's stuff like that that you can do. And for skills, they give you 10 to begin with. Attack is, you know, the regular, they smack your ass and stuff. And you can even have your own formulas here, so that... Um, it's whatever your attack is times four, and the defense times two, and that's what it'll do. So it'll take in the attackers, and just the defenders, and that's how uh, all of that works out. Usually, I think with VX it came up with like a lot more pre-made skills, but I think in NV they wanted people to sort of. Uh, figure this out on their own, like, make it all customized. Uh, for all intents and purposes, I say, uh, you can totally do that. If you want, It's it doesn't take too long to figure out. Like, you could just look at the, the pre-mates, for example. So this is fire, this is spark. So say we want to make eyes. We'll just copy and paste that on here. But instead of that, we'll say ice. I'll change the icon to ice right here. And they all do the same uh, amount of damage, really. The only difference being is it's gonna... It's gonna do ice damage. And you could change the animation right here. To ice. And you could even change the... The message that it shows. Hey Sushi, how are you doing today? We're just making the game here from scratch. I'm looking at the skills. There's not many skills here, so we're trying to make up our own shit. Oh, it's all enemies? Oh, Ooh. oh okay, that was like the strong spark thing. Okay, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, so yeah, you could do that. So say someone was weak to ice instead, so you'd want to use ice instead of fire. And so if you go here, you make a, our little caster person be an actual mage. You could even uh, give them their starting equipment. Yeah. 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 Yay, I'm glad to hear that. Are you at work today? 
and uh, you'll want to go to your mage and let them learn and be able to if you double click here you could uh, give them what skills they could learn say they could learn spark at level one and you could tell them what level it'll be and then they know ice as well oh ice yeah let me change their their curves so they're not like weak as shit in battle Uh, okay. <laughs> Are you a closer today? I hope you're not the only closer and stuff again. And uh, you can make your own po uh, items here. Again, there was a lot more in VX. <laughs> but uh, it's not hard to make your own. Say you want like uh, the magic potion right here. It'll recover MP. And there's a whole bunch of things you can uh, customize in here. Recover HP, take away HP, give them TP. It's sort of like a... It's not a mana thing, it's like uh, by attacking you get this sort of other thing that maybe the it could be their ultimate. It keeps skipping. Oh no, is the stream not, uh, not smooth right now? Uh, I said I hope you're not the only closer again because that'd be stinky. Add state, so if you want to add like California or something, it'll be there. So, for example, you'll be immortal, like my immortal. It should be your data, okay. <laughs> silence. Like, uh, I think Maddie would want silence for customers. You're the only closer. Well, shit. It's stinky. Damn capitalism. So, you can add a whole bunch of, uh,. Custom stuff. Again, it's uh, it depends on your creativity, how much you want to be in depth with your game. If you want it as a visual novel or just as a... Like, they could be key items, for example. If, or if you want it to be in depth, you can make all types of potions like the d inspired ones for your RPG and whatnot. I'm sure there are many tutorials of that online as well, so... I, again, I'm not too experienced with custom uh, skills and whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> are you off at your usual Hello, time? Going? Hey, Delta. I'm good. How are you? Um, and weapon types, same kind of deal as the other stuff I was showing you. You can make your own custom things. Uh, Say you want to have a stronger sword, one that's uh, bigger, stronger, faster. I'm Yo. Right time. Yay, glad to hear that. So if you want your sword, just uh, copy and paste. Just waking up, lol. The same thing. Hmm, good morning to you then. Say you want it to be like a, a saber or something. You want it to be stronger than the regular sword. You can have it do 15 damage. And you can have uh, all sorts of traits, the same kinds of stuff you've seen before. You could have the press it'll be in stores. And even what animation you can do. If we give it like a... Flash effect. To make it cooler. And same kind of deal for armor and... Now, for enemies. The, the enemies are just going to be like a... Uh, the dudes that show up, right? This is your sort of database, sort of like your hero database, except if you want an encounter, you'll have to uh, do troops. Those are the types that you'll uh, actually encounter. So say we want to load up an enemy. One that's not listed yet. You could uh, go into the database, look at uh, fighters you could fight. Say that you had to fight your, your ally first, or they could uh, join your party, or if they betray you and something. They have a couple of the actors here. And they have their own monsters here. And these are... You, there's a there's a lot of good base game um, enemies you could put in here. 
Let's start with a guard. So say you want a guard. You could have like, yeah, I'll just put 211 for those. And the attack. We'll loot the attack at it. And you could even let them drop some items for that. Give them an EXP, how much they'll give. And what attacks they'll do, and how often they'll do them. To say he'll have an attack and a dual attack. You could have them do these at certain times, between these turns, if they have this HP, this MP, if certain dates on them. Even high, how high level the party is, or even if you're doing like mid battle events, you could uh, go ahead and change that up too. So there's our guard. So to make the encounter vis visible in the event, add your uh, encounter name and put in the guard. There we go. Now the placement really depends on if you have a side view or not. So say you, you don't have the side view, it's just going to be like first person kind of battles. This is fine, this is their placement. But if you do side view, you want to put them on the left side because by default the side view it'll have the party on the right side of the screen. And state, same kind of thing if you want like stunned, silenced, stuff like that. You could also make your own ones. And the animations, they're, they're just how the, the attacks look in view. Like that. That's just a little good old smack. Oh, that's fucking loud. I'm glad I didn't have that. And the tile set together. Your own custom tiles. I'll talk a little bit more about that once we look at the map. Common events. Talk about that too. That's a little bigger. The system is uh, what kind of things you want to do. So, for instance, if you don't want the first person battle thing right here, you could use side view though, which we'll do because we made those side view characters. You could have the character start transparent, sorry. When you play the game, it won't just instantly show them right there. Show followers. So uh, once they're, the party is behind you, say you have four, they're all going to be following your character like it was uh, the game Snake. Not by blood damage, floor damage, uh, in case you like get hurt in the game. You want them to die from that. It could be useful for horror games and stuff like that. EXP for reserve members if they're not indirectly in the party. I'll just go ahead and click that. Window color. You can have your own custom windows. We'll just go with that. For now. Now what I'm going to personally do is uh, take off this title music because we're going to be opening and closing this very often. And these are all your starter characters, in case you want them to start with a whole character right now, but for our intents and purposes, we're going to take them off and have them join later. Okay. Let's see, what else, what else? Uh, you could put change your part starting positions for the player and stuff right here. You could even have the, the title screen for the characters right here. So, uh, if you do not have uh, any art in mind, you could just uh, choose between this. Whichever one suits your vibe the best, right here. Ooh, pretty. Hmm. I quite like this. And then from there you could choose the secondary, have a little border right there, in case you want it. And if you don't have a, an image with your title already on it, you could do draw a game title and then I'll show. And you could even customize things such as the sounds that your cursor makes and whatnot. And you could change your terms and stuff all right here. But now, I'll show you how to make a map. So. By default, you're going to have the overworld map, but in case you don't want that, go edit. 
And from here, you could change how big your map is. Say you want a bigger map, or you want just a, a map the size of the room. <laughs> Dance with it. Yeah, I, I know most people who start this probably want a big ass open world kind of. I want a really big town. I want a really big mansions and stuff. But, you know, my biggest advice would be even if you want that, I'd say start small. See what you can do indoors stuff and you can name this. We'll name this Hero. You want it to display it on the right for your um, players. You can also have a name there and it'll show. So, since we're going to begin on inside, what you'll want is not the overworld, but the inside tab. And it'll give you the tile set for inside. SF outside and SF inside are for modern games. So, make this. What you want to do is uh, make it as big as you want it to. Around the room. Around, just like that. After that, you want to put in this wall. Oh, I don't like how that wall looks. Maybe I could use it. Uh, this one. There we go, that blends a little and a little better for me. And you'll want to put the wall at the bottom too. And you can make a little exit of the room right there. There we go. 
So there you go. There's that the start of that room for you. And just uh, think about what your character might like around here. I think they might like a little a little bed. Give them a little little bed right there. And you could give them windows. Also keep in mind that you can always always uh what's it called? Oh, I messed up. There we go. You can always uh, undo. You don't have to uh, have everything be like that. Nothing is set in stone, so say you have a little wardrobe. And you could put it right in front, and it'll stay right in front of that window. Say he has a little, little study area that he keeps. Maybe right over here. This is a big room, you know what? If you think something is too big too, you, there's no harm in also dividing it. Just like this. You want the room to be maybe just around that big. Hey, this track. Funky. Um, 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 um. And you can make a little door graphic. Just like that. Dance. <laughs> Damn. Boom, boom, boom. And make another door graphic. Yeah, just like that. There's the room. Hmm, hold on, I think I did this a little funky. That's what I was going for. Okay. Now I just want to keep in mind I am not the tightest, uh, I just map her around. I do my best. And to sort of, uh, show... Anyways, what I was talking about a study area. What if he wants an area like this? And, you know, relaxing time, and if anyone wants to play some board games with him. Hi, Zayon. Thanks so much for stopping in. Hope you have a good day at work. And you could just sort of do that. Ooh, ooh. Uh, maybe it'll make more sense if the carpet was just outright. Yeah, there we go. That looks a little better. And say he's a, he's a book person. I have it right there. Have a little shelf up there. 
to represent that. Can you fit together? Oh, kind of. <laughs> fit beer. <laughs> Just an open beer on the table, that's funny. Now we'll give you a notebook if it fits. Small one, question mark. Or a big one, yeah, fuck it. Big one. We'll give you a big book. Okay, so that's Harold's room. Since it, it, it won't be Harold, just Harold's room, I guess. Uh, should we make a kitchen? Is it too small for a kitchen? Maybe we could make a little kitchen area. Oh, okay. Good. Okay, if you want a kitchen, there is a, you can make it as long as you want. There are kitchen things right here, you can make that the extender. doesn't have to be in the same order right here. For example, you could just have the sink right there, you could have the prep station be right there. And any loose item you could just sort of put right here. Like that. Except maybe maybe one that actually fits. Like for instance if someone was just drinking or thinking about drinking, you put something there. Up again, one that fits. It'll happen. Yeah there we go. I'm just trying to eat my hand. Oh, you have a little uh, area right there. You have a little dish rack over there. Maybe more ingredients on top, just like that. And you can have a little eating area as well. Now since we're using the red carpet up there, maybe we'll use the carpet right here. Or right here. Yeah. We'll workshop that <laughs> that little uh, voice I made right there. Fine. And yeah, you could have uh, even paintings up and stuff. Doesn't need to be all windows. For example, say you want like personal or family pictures right here. Or if you want pictures of uh, like a world map, you can have them right there. Let me just take out the air window. Oh. I don't remember which wall I used. Ow, come in. Unfortunately, the map does like, yeah, stuff like that that you want. Thank you that you can have a clock like this.
And I believe there is plants or something. Um, maybe not in this. Let's see, should we use boxes or should we use like... Yeah, maybe plants. And that's one. Uh, I'm not done with the, the thing just yet. Mostly done with Harold's room right there. I'll figure out how to do the camera to the kitchen later, but let's see. Mayhap we could uh, do one outside thing. Perhaps outside of uh, Harold's house. That's... Say you want to do that. You don't use the overworld still. You just use the outside. We'll maybe come up here, maybe do some dialogue, and then I may switch to something else. Okay, so you want it all grassy. We'll go ahead and fill this in with some grass. We just click that, like this. Alrighty, now, the type we were using for Hell's House was sort of similar to that, so we'll look up some tiles that were similar to that outside. Mm. This was close-ish, so we'll go ahead and do that. Now there is no rules on how these are supposed to look. Just uh, sort of pick what you think feels right. So you can mix and mix and match them if you like. Maybe it's and typically you like to add some windows on there. You can always add decorations like that. Oh, that's not the same type of window though. little entrance and put in I'm pressing control too to do the the doors by the way you can have your own custom door just like that I'll use the default now if you wanted to go inside you you switch the area transfer player I'll show you a little bit more about the events once we uh pinch this area up a little more we uh Go into that environment and then we'll work on the eventing. So what I'm trying to do here is move the move the trees to be a little sporadic in the area. They are in a town area, but I'm gonna make it a little a little more wild. I head into the town area proper. I'm just adding some trees randomly to try and make it look random. Right there. Okay. Trees. You can make their the their right outside of their door a little more intentional. You could have carrots up there, you could have flowers. Let's use these red flowers. Just like that. And say they want to go to, they have a little path to the town, so I'll add just a little path right there. A little stony entrance. There. And then right here is a little path. You could get either a stone path or a dirt path. Uh uh the wait mm -mm. So. all right let me finish up those trees right there okay I think it was just that one
Okay, now what I usually do is uh, to make it a little more filled, you put in the grass like this, the overgrown grass, and you just fill them in randomly. Make it look like a little like nature-like. There we go, that looks a little more, a little more volume in the world, so you'll just click random uh, foliage right here, place them randomly as well so that, you know, they're not too close, too far from each other, not too much of the same kind next to each other. Unless you want, you know, I'm not a professional at this. Yeah, just have your own little rocks around, stuff like that. It makes it look like just a little more in depth. Have like logs around, there used to be trees. Maybe have some uh, stuff in the, their backyard. So, uh, what kind of uh, housing they have over there? Let's see, there's also fencing you can use, just like that. Oh. Yeah, I guess it makes sense, right? <laughs> we could add fencing just like that. In case it's like pro private property kind of thing. There we go. Hmm. Oh, okay, it's just like that. Roger. So yeah, now that looks a little more full, let me fix that tree right there. So one tip is you probably want to try and make these look... As like compact as possible, yet still pretty unique. Maybe this tree doesn't completely fit. You still have it there and have the fence behind it. Oh, that's why things were fucking up. I accidentally have the fucking rectangle thing on. Let me see if that works now. Oh, no, same thing. I'm gonna give it another try. Okay, no rectangle thing on. Oh, okay. It's just like that. Gotcha. Alright. 
And that's right. sort of similar. Yeah, that's right. sort of similar. Yeah, that's sort of similar. Yeah, what? Why did it start again? What? Hello? Why did it start again? Yeesh. Okay, anyways. Yeah. That's sort of how to do the mapping. So say we actually start here. No, 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 no. Maybe this won't be just the room, but it could be Harold's house. So how we do that is, I'll show you my first event. This will, uh, do player touch. To get out of the house, you'll want to open, right click where you want to start an event. From here, you'll see all these events right here. And there's, uh, the first thing you want to look at is what triggers it. The action button is say it's a, a character you want to talk to. You'll you'll do action button and you know it'll require the player to press the interact button. The player touch is a uh, say there's an enemy and it's trying to chase you. If you touch it, it'll start an encounter or it'll do the game over, etc. Uh, wait, no, that's player touch. So like say a door, you want to open the door. You have the player run into them, it'll open it. Event touch is sort of like if a monster runs up to you, it'll kill you or do an encounter. Auto run is when, uh, right, when you go into the room or the map, it'll start event instantly. Or say you start the game, it'll do this event instantly. Parallel, sort of like if you have an event, um, let's see what's a good example. Say, in a in the map you want a character to be be walking around at the same time as a uh, sort of gear cutscene going and you want to do parallel something like that or if you want characters to do two different things during one event happening that'll be good for a parallel but for this instance we'll want this to be a player touch so once they go to the uh once they click this will want to send them outside so you'll check these events there's a lot of events here i'll talk about them more once i do the thing so you want to go to tab number two transfer player if you click direct designation it'll show you your map list and you'll be able to click where it goes so we'll want to go right outside of this house and since we're going downstairs you'll want them to do that it can retain, but I'll, I'll do down anyways, just in case. And what I'll do on top of that is I'll play a sound effect. This is sort of the out of order of what I wanted to teach. That's why I'm sort of going a little out of order, so I could go into more into depth. Okay. So it's player touch, it'll transfer them up there. And same kind of thing, you want the outside to go inside. So you'll double click that where it says transfer player right at the end. You want to change that. Put it up here, right where the entrance is. Once they're going in, you want it to be up. I'll change that sound effect to open. So wait, wait, no, that's fine. Now let's let's launch and do our first little play test to see how that works. Power by NV, let me actually show you how to take that off because that's kind of annoying. So you'll go to the puzzle piece right here. If you don't want that to show, uh, you can You can have your own plugins, it'll make things easier. There's also scripting, so now I'll instantly go there. You'll see it's the title screen we chose. You'll see that it writes the name Boo. So you can also change your options to there. Use Z and X for confirm and deny. Or you could use your, your quick 
spooky quick mouse. There we go, there's our character and uh, I hid them on the I have them on the bed tile. No, they can't move on, so <laughs> hold on, let me change that. Okay, while we're here, you'll see that these things you can't go on, so we'll, we'll go ahead and say that you could fill in them. Alright, now we'll make them a character that can move on beds. There we go, now you could really move on and off the, at least the top of that. Bottom of that bed. Okay, and you can, you can check this out just like this and move. Oh! <laughs> Hold on, let me fix that. <laughs> oh man. Okay, we'll forego that door for now. I don't want to deal with fixing that at this moment. I'll show that event at another time how to how to set that up. But yeah, you you run around just like this. Check that out. It's the map we made today. We'll fill in more of the indoors eventually. Put down here. And as you can see, it's the the other area we just ran. So you're going out like that. Once you go in like that, you can go in. And now, just like that, between the two maps. Cool. And you can move just like that. Alright. Now, let's have our first text event. So again, you double click where you want that event. Once you're on the event tab, you'll double click right here. Now, let me show you the text options and they're all separated through tabs through these three different sections and they have their own sections and these sections so for example messaging this is where you'll want to do your text and stuff so text is probably where you'll do your most dialogue you could talk right here you could put your face right there now once you're typing once you see that little line right there, once it's there, it, it won't show up anymore, like, at least not on the vanilla. There might be some plugins that'll let the, you go further but than that, but once you reach there, you'll want to go on a different line and start typing there. You can have separate things. Regular windows, it'll show the window regularly. Dim, it'll have it uh, dim out, as if they're speaking in thoughts or... If they're whispering, stuff like that, like narration, transparent, there is no background at all, it's just the text. And you can have your window at the top, bottom, or middle, if, depending on what you're going for, where the characters are placed, emphasis, etc. like that. So choices is in case you want to have the player input, you'll do this and stuff and it'll give you separate choices in the dialogues. What is your proposal? Have separate dialogues just like that. In case you want there to be some sort of different uh, choices over there. Taco Bell? Mmm, Taco Bell. That sounds yummy. I like that proposal. Input number... Oh, hold on. Let me let me show you. There's a lot of options in the text too. So it was sort of like that. If you put in those codes, it'll do that thing. For example, if you want text to be bigger, you want text to not wait for input, you want them to be a different color and stuff like that. To have emphasis on certain words and stuff like that. Hmm. 
And uh, scrolling text, that's good for if you're reading letters, you're doing credits. Control switches, these are your things. So like, for example, say, uh, say a certain character, you want a certain event only to happen after uh, you've spoken to someone. You'll want to do that. But for now, we'll, we'll keep it simple. We'll, we'll talk about all these other things later. All these uh, things as they come up, as to not overwhelm you. We'll just start with text. But first, when you make this event, you'll want to make it represented with someone. Say you want it to be Mr. Edgy himself. And you can even label these events in case you want to, to make it easier and even edgy. And you can even add notes there, stuff like that. Conditions of when they show up, say you only want them in a certain time during the game. You'll have switch that on. But for now, since he's at the start of the game, he'll be the first person we see. We can have him right there. Now action button, so right, it, it'll only activate once we uh, start it. Either that, or right when we walk out, we can have him start up and walk up to us. You know what? Why not do that? We can have him be right here at the top of this tree. If you want him to be facing up, you can face him up right there. And this will be how to make a cutscene. We'll do an auto run just in case. That's what you want for your cutscene, auto run. It'll be the first thing that'll happen once you hit in this, uh, this little area. Now you double click that and you hit show text. You'll find Edgy's icon. Now right there, there's Edgy. You could even preview it. Hello. Now let's have uh, Harold once he gets there. We'll have him walk down a couple of steps. To do that, you'll want to go to the second tab. You'll see set movement route. Now we're the player, so you hit player, but you can see Edgy as the other, like he's another event, so we can do that. So I have to take that as player. If you want to wait for the, him to move before the cutscene continues, you could do it for completion. If if not, if cannot move, I recommend doing that. Otherwise, it, most of the times it might break, so we'll go move down. And since they will be surprised at seeing a G, if you let him do this, they'll jump. This will make their their icon jump. And if you want them to emote, you go into the second tab. Under character, there'll be show balloon icon. And they'll print that exclamation point. Now about those choices. You can add up to six choices, at least in the vanilla without plugins. You can say who are you? You can say good morning. Now, if you say, who are you? You can let him say, I am Edgy Mc... Edgy. <laughs> McLaura is the last name. <laughs> I have a mission for you. Oh, I have a quest for you. Good morning.
And uh, after all that, there's a little end tab to show that the choices are ended. So that after you put those, should you not want them to be separate routes, you could uh, go ahead and type the next dialogue after the, the end thing right there. But if you want them to be separate, you can go ahead and keep making them their own separate things. And after you end that, say you want this to be its own route, you'll do control switch and you could type root A there or something. And then root B here, and then it could be our own separate lines. We could show that another time. Now Harold can reply. Hey, I love adventuring. We'll fill in the whole reasons for the quest later and stuff. <laughs> Pleasure is me. <laughs> uh, shit. I don't remember what it's called. When you learn about ah uh, debriefing, debriefing. I wonder if debriefing was used in the olden days. Probably not. edgy emote a little bit. Well, make him be a little sad that you say no to him. <laughs> Uh, speaking of separate uh, routes, we'll have a, a first separate route right here by getting him as a party member and not getting him as a party member. Did you make the Lord has joined your party? And we could have a little sound effect there if you want. That'll be in the second tab. You go to audio and video in the bottom right. Uh, ME plays like uh, certain short things like uh, when you win fanfares and stuff like that. In this case, it'll be a nice little small small thing to celebrate someone joining. So. If you want them to wait for a second, you'll just hit wait for a second. 60 frames is one, one second. I don't think I did it as long as it is, but it's fine. It's fine. It'll be fine. Wait, there we go. Yeah, you want it after. The best character name you've heard. <laughs> it's Ajin time. I'm evil again. 
Uh, yeah, Zach came up with that name. I thought it was pretty hilarious, so just sticking with that. Alright, so you don't have to do this. I just do this whenever cutscenes end. I make a sort of indicator, a sound indicator to say you, you could keep moving and stuff. Maybe I should make a visual indicator for that as well. That'd be nice, but what I do is this little... This sound. It's a sort of a... <laughs> staple of mine by now. Now, what you want to do is, instead of erasing the vent, you'll want to put in a little, a little switch that will have him as join, and so on. Now, what will this do for this case? Oh, no, no that's not solid. In this case, you'll have both join and solo be right here. Join and solo. So what does this do? This ensures that the event doesn't replay over and over and over again because now that they're blank and now that they're action buttons, the cutscene will only play once and that's it. Now it erases. He'll be right wherever you are. But you might want him to be gone too. Uh, if he joins you, should he join you? There we go, when he joins he'll disappear, but he could still be around-ish. Should you not, so where are we? Um, Let's watch that cutscene now, actually. So that I know exactly where he's standing, because I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> okay, so we'll walk out. We'll go down here. Hello! Oh! Okay, we can't see. Let's uh, move those windows up. So exactly what I was talking about. If you want to move those windows, we'll put them all the way up so that we can see our character. Good thing I didn't write them as long as I usually did because that'd be a pain in, my <laughs> pain in the booty a little bit. You know what? I'm making him too happy, aren't I? Uh... Okay. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> um, great, I love adventuring, I see. Well, if I have to watch over you... <laughs> I suppose I must, but don't get too attached to me. <laughs> okay, okay, when you say yes. Okay. Do not get too attached <laughs> to me. I don't do bonding. <laughs> Okay, anyways, where was I? I got totally sidetracked from that. Okay, putting everything on top. We could have uh, that as the middle to sort of emphasize the fact that you got a party member. Okay, anyways, let's watch that so I know their positioning. I'm pretty sure I didn't make the move, but maybe I should once I see their little initial blocking there. Okay, Harold, get out your damn house. Hello, okay, there we go, now you can see it, and uh, who are you? Good morning. <laughs> Edgy McLord is the last name. I have a quest for you. Great, I love adventuring. I see. Well, if I have to watch over you, I suppose I must. Would you like me to assist you on your journey? Uh, yeah. Do not get too attached to me. I don't do bonding. We shall head for the guild building to learn more. Edgy McLord has joined your party. Alright, so uh, I guess I could have him, uh, what's it called? The actors. Oh, 
He's not behind me because I didn't actually add him. That's very funny. I lied to you. I said he joined the party when he in fact did not join the party. Okay, so uh Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <sighs> Hold on, we're doing a little uh you know, special is, thing here. What's this Damn, about bandage? Bandage? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, there'll be plenty of time for bandaging if you want. Shit, I lost my train of thought again. I'm the best teacher ever. Where the fuck is the uh, adding party members here? <laughs> oh, there they are. I was in the first tab this whole time. Okay, we're adding a Jean Lord. Now, hold on, let me point out something here. You can always remove them, you can always add them. If you remove them, you can always initialize them and have them be at level 1 again. But that seems kind of shitty to me, so I'll never do that. Personally, in my game, so... I hope no one does that in their games, you, you know? Unless you lose memories or something, but you know, even if you lose your memories, you still have your experience, and now I'm just ranting. So anyways, we'll do join, and then we'll have a separate one join too, because it'll be technically a separate one. Joined so that he doesn't disappear prematurely before the event's even done. There. So he'll probably still disappear. He'll be behind Harold instead. Bouncega. Okay, so she'll follow our players. Okay, so he will show up physically when uh, he joins the party. So let's see if that works out. Just like that. Alright, Harold, let's leave your house again. Hello, good morning, who are you? Magic McGlory, blah 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 blah. Yes. There we go, now Jim McGlory is behind, he's following us, it's so cool. He said we're following him even though he's following us and stuff. So yeah, you got Edgy McMahon over there, Edgy McGlory. Now, uh, hold on, let me fix that event a little more. And let's just do this. Yeah, I don't know how to do it. It's fine. Uh, okay, um... Let's see how the, the other roots play out. Uh, I say roots, it's the same thing. <laughs> other than the join and not join right now, okay. Uh, good morning, indeed. It is the morn. I have a quest from the town people for you. And the rest of them is the same, except no. Let's meet the guild building for the briefing. Okay, so he's doing that. I'm gonna have him walk up, turn left. I mean, move left. So again, that's sort of the, uh... The same thing for movement as I did with the character, except it's gonna be for the edgy. So you go the edgy and step player. Where we want him to move is move up, move left. Here and right, so he's still facing the player. Move up, move left, turn right. So that'll be right there. The reason I'm calculating this is because this is where I want him to stand. Should we not pick him for our next group? This will be edgy too. Should we not choose to pick him? He'll only be there physically if we decide to go solo and we'll move this one so that they don't they not too on top of each other so let's see what will happen when we're there. Have 
and talk to you while not in your party. Just like that. Okay, so let's see what happens when we do not accept him again. Oh, hold on. What happened there? <laughs> he just instantly went. <laughs> hold on, I think it's because I. Oh, okay, hold on. <laughs> I have to wait for completion. <laughs> okay, Donna didn't mean to have you teleport, man. Okay, let go. There we go, that's a little better. Now you can talk to him, he'll face you wherever you look. And good shit like that. Alright! Too edgy for walking? I'm too edgy for walking. Yeah, unless you, uh, unless you have him join your party, in that case his icy heart melts a little bit. He's just like, oh, maybe I do love this Herald person. This Herald son by Kesha. He just instantly comes to you. Maybe I should make him walk up. Yeah, hold on, I'll do that after. So, uh, damn it, Harold, you're such a nice, outgoing, friendly person. What did I do to end up with you? Uh, if you press uh, the menu button or X normally, you could see uh, they're all together. They're both heroes for now. Uh, I might change that later, but hey, fuck it. They might both they both be heroes. Uh, speaking of that, let me let me actually relook position. I think it's I think it's just like yeah, right there. They move one, so I'll have him move up twice. So that it looks a little more natural. He doesn't just instantly go in your ass when he joins your party. That movement route, edgy. Wait for movement. Yes, move up twice. Sides with you. Alrighty. Edgy McLord. Ah, uh, that's even better. Yeah, I like that effect. There we go, and I'm up your ass. You think you could run from me, Harold? <laughs> you cannot run from me just because I'm edgy. Because I don't like people, I don't like friends. So don't think I'm going to be attached to you by the end of this game, okay? Because I'm not. I don't give a shit. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, we've learned quite a bit today. We learned how to make a make a good old map, uh, make a character, make some dialogue, make some mapping. I will show you how to properly do this. This gate next time. I don't have the brain cells for it at the moment, so yeah. Uh, thanks everyone for joining in. We got some people popping in saying hi. Thanks for complimenting the Cappy. I'm sorry, the Nerd Cave, I didn't reply to you when you were here. It still haunts me to this day, even though it's the same day. Thank you, Maple, for coming in. It means a lot. Thanks, Dag. Uh, everyone, I'm going to be here tomorrow. Oh, yeah. I Thank you, Delta. I'm going to be here tomorrow. I'm going to do a spontaneous story time. If you're sending things to the Discord, uh, if you want to send things to the Discord to get uh, our little prompts in, uh, you might want to do that. Let me go ahead and look that up for y'all. Um, I don't want to do it in my uh, <laughs> in this uh, window. Wait, I guess I could. What am I thinking? I could just check out the display capture. Yes. Oh. No, that's not taking out the display capture. Okay, there we go. Now we're just chatting. Hello, everyone. I could see you. I could see your uh, <laughs> your icons here. Very pretty. Very cool. While I do this spiel, I'm going to battle royale. Yes, if you're in the Discord, they... um. We totally are sending in prompts for me tomorrow. I'm doing an improv show where, uh...
Wait, oh, I can't turn it on a joystick, but it's fine. We're doing an improv show. Uh, I'm taking prompts. If there is enough prompts, then I'm putting them in the generator. I am uh, seeing uh, which word comes out, and I'm combining that with a, with a random genre that I'm going to get as well. And then whichever word comes up, then I'm going to put that in. And say it's like uh, the word comes up is pizza and the, uh, the genre is romance. Then I'm going to act out a little short skit made up on the spot from those prompts tomorrow. It'll be my first one tomorrow. So yeah, that'll happen at that point. Thanks everyone again for joining.